Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to the Davis Human Relations event, uh, Breaking the Silence of Racism. My name is David Greenwald. I'm one of the members of the Davis Human Relations Commission. Unfortunately, uh, neither our chair, Judith Plank, uh, nor our vice chair, Craig Blomberg, uh, could make it today. Uh, they both had other commitments, uh, so they asked me uh, to give a few welcoming remarks. Um, now, first of all, uh, I would like to fa uh, thank the Davis Media Access um, uh, for uh, recording this event. Um, it's going to be uh, rebroadcast uh, at a later date, so it's not a live event, uh, but uh, thank you. That, that's a volunteer effort uh, on their part, so uh, much appreciated. Um, this event today is actually the culmination of two separate efforts. Uh, first, last January at the city's MLK event, we had a panel of five individuals who spoke to the issue of race in Davis. We had been talking about doing a follow-up event when in June, a noose was found at the Davis High School football stadium hanging from the goalpost. The goal of today's program is to continue the conversation. Uh, shortly, community members will be invited up to this microphone to share the recent experiences and thoughts regarding racist incidents in the Davis community and ask questions of a panel comprised of local leaders and officials that we will be introducing to you shortly. The idea is that panelists will be there to listen, not to speak, and to address concerns and questions from the community. Over the years, many in this community have undoubtedly seen various incidents that momentarily captured the imagination and the concern of the broader public, only to see those moments fade away with little follow-up action. It is our goal today to make this event be about the beginning of a community dialogue where we take input from the public and translate that information into goals and eventually an action plan. I now turn over the remainder of this program to today's moderator, Sandy Holman, and our group of leaders from various segments of our community. Well, welcome. I want to say to all of you, first of all, happy holidays, and how wonderful of you to come out on a wet, rainy day during what is one of the busiest times of the year for a lot of different people. And we're coming out today for something that's very, very, very important. So as uh, David was saying, the City of Davis Human Relations Commission wants to say thank you. I'm your humble servant today. And as he was saying, the City of Davis Human Relations Commission wants to hear your stories. Not only do they want to hear your stories, we actually want to record your stories because it's important to document things so that there's a collective memory when people move on. This commission will change, city council members will change, people will change in the community. And you don't always want to have to go back to starting from number one. But um, as David was saying, my name is Sandy Homan. I'm the director of the Culture Co-op. The mission of my organization is to promote respect for equity, diversity, cultural competency, reading, and a quality education for all. I have the honor of working with all age groups all over the country. In fact, I was just at a school in Woodland, and we were talking about bullying, and we were talking about some of the isms that we face in society. And these were our young babies, which is one of the reasons I am so committed to this work, because they asked me, what are you doing Saturday, Mrs. Holman? And I said, we're going to be talking about racism. And you know what they said? They were like, oh. That's going to be hard. And this was an elementary school. But we owe it to our young people. We owe it to them to model what we want our societies to be like. So I just want to take a few brief moments. I'm not going to talk, ab talk about my organization much because I want to use the time we have today well. I will let you know I put some information back there, some cards and some pamphlets. And even though I'm a servant today for the city of uh, Davis and the Human Relations Commission, you're welcome to email me or call me if you have a question or something after today's event is over. We are not going to solve racism in two hours. 
We are not going to solve everyone's problem in two hours. Unfortunately, we may not be able to hear from everyone. That's why we gave you an evaluation form with a space on that form to write your stories. I hope you write a summary of your story so we can collect it and, as I said, make a recorded memory of this. We also have index cards. If you are uncomfortable asking a question, you can write your question on an index card and someone can bring it up. And we're going to ask you if you feel comfortable enough to sh when you share your story or ask a question to come down to the center podium. I have a mini altar here. These colors represent and have traveled with me all over the country and parts of the world. These represent courageous people like yourselves who've come together to try to really start to make a difference. And as David said, not just talk to each other about these issues. So I want to share some things with you from my heart. I'm a very honest person. I'm going to be turning 50 next year. I'm very proud of that. I've lived long enough and have done this work long enough to know that it is not easy. We are facing this nationally and internationally. It is a huge problem. And the reason why people don't like to talk about things like racism is because it's scary or when they've shared their stories, nothing is done with those stories and they're left raw and open, or there's mistrust that's built up as a result of things that have happened in the community or as a result of isolation. There's a variety of reasons, but it is one of the most important things we can do as a humanity because I have always been taught by my elders that our futures are totally interconnected. I was taught from a very young age that every single person in this room and beyond is a part of my human family. I naively thought everyone was getting this lesson too. I was taught that you would never call someone out of the name or do something to hurt that person in their heart because it would be like hurting a family member. I teach this to young people as young as three, four, and five, and they understand it. They get excited. You mean we're all connected? I say, yes, we are. If you go back far enough, we all can trace our ancestry back to Africa, in case you guys didn't know that. We're all part of the human family. So I want to thank you. The City Council wants to thank you. The City of Davis Human Relations uh, Commission wants to thank you. Our incredible panelists who are here today as representatives to try their best to answer any questions you may have want to thank you. I want to say a special thank you to Diane Evans and Leanne and Alex and Kelly. Could you guys all stand up, Kelly? They have all done some <laughs> incredible and work. Alex, uh, Leanne and Alex are in the back. These guys have worked hard. They have poured their hearts into this. And no matter what happens today, I know we all are going to learn something. So I want to sh share a few things with, with you before we get started. And she's going to help me here. Um, I don't know if we can turn one of those lights off because you can see it better. But these are some simple lessons that I have learned from my elders and from the very hard work that I do. One of the reasons why I love working with young people so much is because they rejuvenate me. I've been in situations that have been dangerous to me because this is how important this issue is for me. I, I don't just spend my Saturdays doing this because it's fun. It's tough stuff. I've run. I've had to, uh, been called every name under the sun. And then the kids reinstill hope in me. So these are some of the lessons I've learned from my elders and my experiences and people if we really want to impact our community. First of all, you have to have love and commitment towards you and your fellow human beings, and we have to agree to share power and resources. You need to have a legacy statement for yourself, a mission and a purpose for yourself, a sense of who you are, including your heritage, your ethnicity, your history. I have found when we're doing seminars and trainings that it's the ones in the room who have no sense of who they are that are often the most fearful and will often be afraid of others as they're sharing their stories. Cultural competency and understanding of equity is crucial. So as we talk about doing future work, all of us need to make an effort to have an understanding of cultural competency and the understanding of equity. We need a basic understanding of systems and how they work. Systems work is critical. If you can read anything by Gwenda, in fact, I'll send the Human uh, Relations Commission uh, an appendix of some things that are must-reads. Because when you understand systems and how they interface to impact people at the ind individual and group level, then the way you do your work changes. You don't do it the same. Because you start to realize, as Barbara Sizemore will say, doing that is just not effective. It's not going to change a thing. So we need to understand systems. Uh, we need to understand the historical structures, policies, practice, and other isms 
that, and from a variety of world perspectives. My grandfather used to say, Sandy girl, read about an event from different perspectives around the world and someplace in the middle you'll find the truth. And it was the best piece of advice he ever gave me. So it's important to understand isms, racism, uh, sexism, whatever the situation is from a variety of different world perspectives. To understand that the effects that institutional arrangements have on people. We have institutions, our educational system, our uh, political system, our healthcare system, our judicial system. There are some things in those systems that aren't working well. There are some things that are doing okay. But we need to understand how those systems combine and create a compounded institutional impact on communities and individuals when we are not operating in a healthy way. We need to understand the basics of conflict resolution. I've had people scream at me, throw things at me, hold a gun at me. I've had all kinds of things happen to me. So it's nice when all of us learn some basic things around conflict resolution. Insight into what makes people, communities, nation states feel secure, valued, and like they have, they, that they live in a just society. What are the things that make us feel safe in our community? What do we here in Davis and in Yola County and beyond want to help make our communities feel safe and just and fair? And what are the foundational constructs of peace and proactive action? One of the things we're going to be doing today is leaving about a half hour to come up with ideals because there's some serious brilliance in this room. I see several people that I know in this room who are brilliant people, who have ideals, who know best practices nationally that are going on to address issues like this. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't have to struggle. There's a lot of people dealing with these things and some things have been sorted out. And also real life experiences and a sense of the priceless nature of time. I was raised with a sense of the priceless race, uh, nature of time. I don't take time for granted. None of us is promised tomorrow. None of us is promised next year. And I want to leave this place knowing that I did my best to use my gifts and talents, because you all have them. Every single person in this room has what I call a brilliant light that if we choose to dig deep out of love and power, not denying the real issues that are going on in the world, and come together as a whole, there is no stopping us. I was taught that the power of love combined with action, knowledge, awareness, and abilities, wow, watch out. And so I'm hoping today, as we share our stories, that we keep in mind a few things. That, you know, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. That, that racism is an insidious thing. It's been here since the inception of the beginning of people, trust me, in some shape or form. It's been here a long time. It's going to take a concerted effort to deal with it. And I want to give you a basic definition for racism, and there are many. But racism is a prejudice which holds that members of one racial group, and I put it in quotes because I firmly believe there's only one race, and that's the human race. You know, if, if we can procreate with each other, we're from the same species. So we're the human race. So I have that in quotes. Are superior intellectually, physically, morally, et cetera, to another group. Types of racism include individual, institutional, which is much more difficult to get rid of because it is uh, covert and overt and, in its practice, and then structural, what they call racialization. And if you're not familiar with the Kerwin Institute, you should check out their website. They're leading the way with some innovative and progressive thinking on these types of issues. So we're going to be mainly looking at that uh, racism in the community, the experience that you have based on recent experiences, because we've had some unfortunate things happen in this community, or if you want just to share your stories. But I want to encourage you all, as my elders used to say to me, let your light shine. Like I said, you all have gifts, talents, personal power, and a resolve to make a difference. There can be no stopping you. You add a plan of action to that, follow through, peace, goodwill, forgiveness, and all those other things that are necessary for making that cake of humanity that helps us to be the best that we can be. And like I said, watch out. I've seen the kids do it, so I know we can do it. I wish you guys could be with me when I'm working with these kids. I wish you could have been with me yesterday. It was like, oh, this is perfect. I'm being filled up with gas and hope for the future for something today, which I still feel can be filling in a way that's um, positive for all of us. So um, just very quickly, I was taught this. As a group, as you're thinking about changes for the future, Identify a goal or something that you want to accomplish. We want to get rid of racism. Take massive action towards that goal. 
And then evaluate whether or not those actions are working. And if they're not working, change those actions. That's a simple thing for anything you want to achieve in your life. Figure out what you want to do. We want to address racism. Deal with it the best we can. Get rid of it if possible. Take massive actions toward it. We're doing this today. There's probably be, there'll probably be seminars and other events and other community gatherings where people can talk about how we can address this insidious thing. And then evaluate whether or not it's being effective. Whatever we're doing that's not being effective, let's change it. And keep doing it and doing it and keeping that memory and that recording so the new faces that come in and take over keep it a seamless thing. Go ahead and go forward. So we're going to go past all of that. We're going to go forward. Uh, these are some books and things that I will send to the Davis. You can keep going. The Davis City Commission for you to read. I just want you to know the world needs your gifts. I work with people who are suffering. This is a luxury, you know, to be able to sit down and talk about this. You know, there are people who are dealing with this who don't have the luxury. I'm very aware that this is a luxury. Believe it or not, as painful as this can be. The world, the city of Davis, our communities need your gifts. So I'm hoping that we'll be bold and rise up together. You can go forward and go forward. Um, go forward. And so I do believe there's unity and diversity. I'm very fortunate to have sister friends and brother friends of every ethnic hue because I've met so many incredible people who've touched my life. We have fought, we have shared, we have exchanged, but we've grown as a result. And that's what I'm hoping we can do a little bit today. We don't have to fight, you can go forward. These are some of the people, just keep going forward, who have sacrificed their lives and dedicated their hearts to trying to make a difference in bringing people together. You can keep going. These are some other people, Ronald Takaki, who just passed away not too long ago. These are all people who tried to make a difference in the world better. Each of us can be like them. We can be our own selves. You can keep going and create our new a destiny for what we're going to accomplish. We should be inspired by them when things are tough and when it's difficult. You can keep going. And all of them, all of them, the ones who are here and the ones who have moved on, are hoping that we stand up and do the good fight. Um, I kept wondering when someone was going to do something, and then I realized I am someone. Everyone in this room is someone, whether you're two or 50 or 100. Live hard. This is my model. Live fearlessly. Give often. Use your gifts. Make a difference. Forgive others. Take care of yourselves and let your voices be heard. And you know, to tell the truth, you don't need to scream. The truth is often powerful enough, but let your voices be heard. I'm going to go forward. So with that, I'm going to um, introduce... Oh, I'm sorry. We also, David, met to let you guys know. We have translation. If anyone needs translation, you can go to the gentleman in the back with his hand in the air. And he has handsets. It's just for Spanish. But you're welcome if you need translation to go back there. Um, so now it's my honor. We, we have an, an incredible panel here today that represents different organizations and uh, the city of Davis and uh, various organizations that work with the community on a variety of issues. And they're going to be introducing themselves to you and just telling something, either basically sharing why they think this forum is important today or one thing that their organization is doing to try to address racism. And we're going to start with Davis City Councilwoman Rochelle Swanson. If you can go ahead and give her a hand. Good afternoon. Oh. Thank you. That's nice. The applause before stop speaking. Um, I, I want to make all of you, welcome all of you here. This is so important. Um, I feel very privileged to live in a community where this is a conversation that's not just being reactive, but it's being proactive. And I think that is really important and a testament to what we need to do and, and all the work that we can continue to move forward. Um, I'm here wearing a, a number of hats. I mean, I am a city councilwoman here in Davis, uh, but I know I was also asked this on the panel because my husband and I also own a couple of restaurants. To, to speak uh, as appropriate to hiring practices. But most importantly, at least to me, is that I'm a mom. And uh, two of my four kids are bi biracial. And so have experienced racism on different levels um, through things that they've experienced growing up. And it, it gives a certain unique view. Nothing's tougher, I think, than watching your, your children suffer. It's something that you can't do much about, at least when it's happening. And uh, you're right, I am someone. so. Take, you know, the opportunity to use um, the connections and be on council to try to do what is possible to make progress wherever I can. So thank you again for coming, and I, I really look forward to hearing all your voices. And sitting next to her is Captain Darren Patel, representing the Davis Police Department. And no one ever claps for me. <laughs> 
Hi there. Um, I'm Captain Darren Pytel. I'm in charge of operations at the Davis Police Department. Operations is essentially all the uniform services for the department, which is patrol, traffic enforcement, parking enforcement, uh, volunteers, um, special events, special assignments, critical incidents. So pretty much anything that the officers uh, respond to, um, they mostly work for me and, and I also deal with a lot of those issues. Um, I am a Davis, Davis resident, a uh, lifetime Davis resident. Um, grew up in the police department actually. Started there when I was 15 years old uh, as a cadet and started as an officer back in 1987. Worked a, a variety of assignments including patrol, traffic enforcement on a motorcycle, um, bicycle enforcement. Um, I've been in administration now for about 13 years. And uh, the police department, I think we have kind of a unique role in, um, in bias and um, critical incidents involving, uh, you know, some of the things that David mentioned, the noose at the high school, things like that. You know, as a police officer, I think we're both the, the flashpoint for racial incidents, uh, an arrest or citation or critical incident that can go wrong.